Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a voice recording to replicate an animation I found interesting on Twitter. It's basically a kind of twisting spiral animation, so let's start. So here we in Blender, as always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. Let's start with the geometry node tree and I am going to use a curve circle. Okay. Uh, as long as it's a cyclic curve, it will just be fine. For example, those you can find within the knots, like torus, knot plus. These are also options that you can play around with. Okay, but I'm going to start with a simple example, like a curved circle. Okay. As always, I'm going to use the point instance to instance another curved circle so that I can start to use the helical connection. I've explained in the tutorial of loop node. Recently, I also find that there is an alternative way, but it feels that we still need a loop node to do similar kind of things. Anyway, I'm going to turn the resolution down to 4, and I'm going to do the correct alignment to erecting all these kind of things instead of just hanging around as an XY plane. So I'm going to align alignment on spline and plug that in rotations and decrease the radius. So now you see. Uh, I basically a torus is being done. Uh, my goal is to connecting all these kind of points, and this is exactly what I'm doing with the helical connection. And you need to deal with the branch amount, which is the second curves. So now we have done this stuff. You see there's a kind of a gap. Okay. Now there are two ways to resolve that. One is to increase the resolution. The other is to use another node, which is called the reset spline cyclic. So it forms a non-cyclic spline, but the start and the end point are overlapping to each other so that you do not see the gap. Whichever way is fine. Uh, you can try to play around with all these kind of things. I see there is still a kind of penny bug, but anyway, I don't know. I do not want to deal with that for the moment. Yes. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is to deal with the rotations. As you can see, by dealing with this rotation, we are rotating this spiral. Uh, very often in my related tutorial, I'm going to I'm using the float range node and combine XYZ at the axis. So immediately you see something is happening, but not very obvious. Uh, we are using the degree, but I'm going to use the radius so that it's easier to control with the stop by typing TAU. It means two pi. Okay. So this is kind of very interesting geometry that we usually form. Just to briefly explain this float range node, uh, in the older implementation, it was using the index. Okay. The index is a so-called step mode because uh, every time it's plus one for every vertices. And right now we know that we have about 32 vertices. Uh, so there is one issue that uh, by increasing this resolution, you can see the rotation has also been increased. So it's very important to imp implement a stop mode so that no matter how you change the resolution, the rotation does not change. Otherwise, you have to run through a complex calculation about how many vertices I actually achieved the uh, two pi and so on and so forth. And the way to do in the older implementation is that you, you need to do the attribute statistics and map range. These are kind of very simple thing. But in the new implementation of this float range node, I started to use accumulated field. And as you can see, it does not really change much because by default it's plus one as, as well. And you just use the trailing or leading and so on and so forth. Okay. It seems like there is no changes despite this group index, which will be very useful, but not in this case. Okay. Another usefulness of this accumulated field node is that uh, it's a uh, predefined that the index will always plus one. So there's no way to actually change that. But uh, for random value, you can plug into the value, into the accumulated field, and you can just plug the trading or leadings. And you can see uh, it's kind of, it will give kind of very interesting effects that uh, if you increase the maximum, then you can see how rotation is being affected. So these are just the kind of simple things about the accumulated field in which we're dealing with the step. And today, basically, we're going to use this feature of uh, the new step and the stop. So instead of using the stop, I'm going to turn this stop into zero, which means it will use a step. 
and every time it's plus one so you will see the issue that by increasing this resolution it will increase the rotation but here we're going to clamp that so clamp at uh, tau which means 2 pi so no matter uh, so by increasing the resolution you will not have increased rotation but you will have a shortened region because the step is always one so you can change this step to determine how many regions is twisting itself for a full cycle okay so this is how we actually accomplish this partial twisting pattern by dealing with this step and uh, clamp there is a one thing we can do is by using a mass knot if we keep a mass knot you can see how it's kind of rotating itself kind of very interesting but there is also one issue I realized that it does not uh, change the part of twisting so I want this twisting to move clockwise or counterclockwise and honestly it's not very clear to me how to do that I know we can deal with this step so that uh, some part is adding 0 some part is adding 0 0.39 or like 0 0.4 but uh, it does not seem to be very clear how to do this exactly. So instead of uh, dealing with the math of this step, we're going to use another method, which is offset field list, which is basically asking the value of here to be the value of there, something like that. So the way to really do that is uh, by the way, this offset field list is kind of very similar to field add index or attribute transfer. Whichever way you do, they are basically the same because they are operating on fields, they are operating on index. Uh, in reality, this node is built upon this transfer attribute. Uh, where's my transfer attribute? Yes. It's in reality, it's built upon this transfer attribute. So we're only going to affect the rotations, not the cut normal and the tangent. So I'm going to plug the vector into the field and output this new field. Uh, initially, we do not see any changes. But what's very interesting is when you try to offset this value, then you can see there's rotation happening. There's one thing I want to remind you because it's offset in index. So which means if the resolution is not high enough, then the, this kind of offset will not be very smooth. This is just kind of a reminder. So you need to tweak, a, tweak this kind of value in order to get a, a nice result. So I think this is it. The rest is really just uh, tweaking on this kind of value for animation. Uh, so let's take a same time node. I have a preset uh, which is called time info node. The moment I created this preset that we do not have a same time node yet. So we have to use the driver and many other things. And then later I keep this preset because I have negative and uh, offset and so on. But in this case, because we need a plus one integer every time, which is a frame for the offset. So I'm going to use the same time instead of the time info. But we still need to do the math. Let's make a divide for this add. And let's divide by 25. And then you can try to play with this animation. Let's take that to 1000. And then by playing this animation, you can see how it's actually rotating in itself. So, uh, but I think this is it. At the end, you can bevel the curve to make it into an actual mesh. And uh, try to play around with all these kind of settings and so on and so forth. Uh, for example, increase the resolution, decrease the radius, decrease the radius. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, you can definitely also tweak lots of values. For example, this uh, clamp using the map range, color ramp, float curve. Uh, I don't know how you can actually change that, but there are lots of ways to make the this kind of twisting a little bit smoother, in my opinion. But I think uh, this is it for me today. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.